Well, now, as close as Delbert Swind and I had become, uh, even though we were sharing a flat together, Tom Wood was my best friend, without any question or doubt. And I think it was after we had gone before the review boards. <coughs> Didn't know for sure yet whether they were going to make us officers. As far as I can remember, that's the timeline. But I'm working away in the A&D office, and uh, someone comes in and asks Sergeant Mims, is there a Corporal Riggs here? Yes, sir. And he signals to me to come up, and the guy says, let's step out in the hall. And he said, uh, you are a close friend of Tom Wood? Yes, I am. And I can tell this is not a happy occasion. Well, he said he's been badly injured. His... Uh, Condition is critical, and we don't know how to get a hold of his wife. Can you get a hold of her? Yes, I can. But would you uh, contact her and, as carefully as possible, alert her to come on up here because he may not make it? I said, well, how bad is it? He said, well, and I don't remember this for sure, but I think he said that his respiration was about six breaths a minute and the heart rate not much more. So it was critical. And I don't remember how it was done. But we got a hold of Peggy, and then I went with her up to where they had Tom. And by that time, he was doing much better, thank God. So then much later, when he's better now of the hospital, we're talking with him, and what the heck happened? Well, he said, you know, they'd uh, put me in charge of a ward, now, you know, some officer was above him, but he was in charge of that ward. The non was doing the work <coughs> in a psychiatric wing of the hospital. And he said every evening, every afternoon at a certain time, uh, we asked that everybody help kind of clean up, tidy up a little bit. And he said this one black soldier was always a sort of a gold brick didn't want to do his part and he said I'd have to roust him out and say come on everybody works everybody helps so he said wasn't well, anything unusual that he wasn't getting up and doing his part and he, and he said I was just walking down through there and I shook his bunk and told him come on come on do your part and he said I didn't realize that he was upset any more than any other time so he, Tom said yeah, he just walked on well, that gentleman got out of that bed, came up behind Tom, and hit him from the back, full force, right at the base of his skull. And I can't remember if Tom's jaw was broken or not, but if it wasn't broken, it was dislocated. And they near killed him. I don't know what they did to him, if anything. But it was a real scare, a real scare. But he recovered. Once he started, you know, getting back to normal respiration and normal heartbeat, he, he came right along. I don't remember if he was in the hospital more than two or three days. You know, it's odd how one second in time, or a few seconds in time, can just change a lot of things. Well... Wasn't very long after that that we were advised that we were going to be commissioned. I don't remember the ceremony, but there was a little ceremony. And I remember some of the guys in our outfit waiting for us outside when we came out. And there was a little tradition that the first person to salute you, you paid him a dollar. So we both had had a dollar ready. Don't remember who got my dollar. Don't remember who got Tom's. But the guys were proud of us, pleased for us. That's nice. And we also were given orders. I think maybe we even had the orders before they actually did the formal commissioning deed. And it wasn't very long after that that uh, we are on our way to Brook Army Medical Center in near uh, San Antonio, Texas, and since Tom had his Nash car there, one of those old beautiful Nashes, but kind of like a wash tub, we decided, hey, we could all go in that car. 
our four, you know, Don and I and uh, our two little ones, Tom and Peg and their Nita K. We loaded into that Nash and headed south. Off we went. Got to Barstow, stopped to eat. And it was getting towards evening. <laughs>